to share the screen. Okay, so I have a, a new Jupiter. So in this example, I'm just going to give you some information uh, about the, today we're going to talk about the homework for Fast AI that I want you guys to do, which should be a fun one. And then also we're going to get to talk about the mini project for NLP. And I'll go over some of the files. Um, so we'll talk about that as well. Are there any questions before we get started? Any questions? Okay, great. So let's let's go ahead then um, and continue. Right. So the goal of this the assignment will be. Um, uh, basically to do what we did in the previous video, but but with your own data. I, and, and I want you to find some interesting data problems, okay? Which basically just means find some interesting uh, keyword searches. So you will need to use um, the Bing uh, API, which is part of something called Azure, uh, A-Z-U, so Azure, right? This is Microsoft. So you will have to, just like with any API, whether it's Twitter or, or this one or that one, you will have to get have to get an account, right? And that's got to be individual to you. So you'll have to get an account. Uh, we sh you should be able, Bing Image Search is, um, is an option for finding and downloading images. It should be free, so don't pay anything, for up to 1,000 queries per month. And each query can download up to 150 images. So if you think about that, um, you should be able to download 150,000. All right, so <clears throat> obviously you don't need that much data, but you do need some, some data. Uh, check out the website book.fast.ai just in case. Um, you know, there might be other solutions out there too. Um, you know, they might have like, you know, a, a longer list. So it might not be a bad idea just to check it out, just in case um, there's a better solution. It gives you better images, right? But otherwise, uh, you can just use. <coughs> You're, but otherwise, you're just going to use the, um, what is called the Bing image search, search API. You will need to get an account for this. Okay. All right. So that's kind of the information. Let's say that now you've gotten the account. Um, and now you're ready to go. So then basically the way that the, the, the way that it works is pretty simple. <clears throat> it's gonna be key. You're gonna, they're gonna, when you create your account, they should give you a key. Uh, and definitely check out the fast a, uh, AI website. They might have some info there but basically uh key os dot environment dot get and then you're going to make a connection to a sure uh and then it, you're going to specify the a sure search key search key and then of course, they're gonna give you some kind of a key, right? So this is gonna be you know, your key, okay? So you make the API connection. Um, and then after that, you're gonna be, you're gonna want to search the images. Um, All right, so this, 
fast AI should have a built-in function already called search. Sorry. Search images Bing. So by doing this, basically, you know, because you're using the OS, so import OS, you're setting that key, and then this function will be able to find it. So that's basically the idea. So to download images with Bing Image Search, sign up at a Microsoft at Microsoft for a free account. You will be given a key which you can copy and enter uh, as follows. Or if you're comfortable at the command line, you can uh, set it in your terminal with an export command. So that's also an alternative. So a sure search key and the key. So set it as a parameter, right? As an environment variable, if you will. And then the search images Bing will, will look for that uh, environment variable. If it finds it, it'll use it. Does that make sense, guys? Yes. Perfect. All right, once you've done that and you've established your connection with Bing, then now you have to do two things. You have to search for things, and then you have to save them in a folder, very similar to the fruits folder that we looked at today. All right, so we are going to do them. Um, let's say you're gonna look for some, for some images. So we're gonna do results, oops, sorry. We're gonna do results, search images Bing, and in here, you're gonna plug in the key, of course, and then you're gonna plug in the search term that you want. So in this case, uh, the example in the book is grizzly bear. Now remember, these are images off the internet. So it's almost like if you went to Bing and typed grizzly bear, think about the variety of pictures you would get. That's kind of what you're getting from this. So there's a lot of noise, a lot of things, but you have all that code that I gave you to get today to play with it and try to achieve good results. Obviously, don't do it about grizzly bears. We'll talk about this because this is important, actually. I want you to pick something really interesting, okay? All right, and then once we have the images in results, we want to just go ahead and download the image. So now I'm gonna give you some code just to kinda do that task, okay? So let's think, this should create the folder and everything for you. So let's think about it. We're gonna set some, now this is just an example with bear types. This assumes, of course, you're doing three classes, All right? So this would be, So the classes would be, let's say, uh, grizzly bear, <coughs> black bears, and teddy bears, <coughs> for instance. So it'll grab these three different types of images from the Bing search, and then it's going to download them. So you're gonna create a path, kind of like what we did, it's gonna be, in this case, bears, like I had fruits, right? And then now that you have it, you can download all the data in there. So you can say, um, for O, O would be the category in, bear types, bear, yeah, bear types, yeah, right? Um, yeah, for O and bear types, colon, 
And what do we want to do now? We want to specify a new destination. So the destination will be uh, path forward slash O. Okay, so that means in bears grizzly, in bears black, in bears teddy. Okay, so that should create that for you. So the first time, because this won't exist, you're going to create it, right? So destination dot make directory. Only if exists. Uh, okay, equal true. So this should check the first time. Okay, and you know it'll create your folders. This is kind of useful because, you know, depending on what these variables you set up here, that's the folders you're going to get end up with. So it gives you more automation. Basically. So we've created the folder. Exists. Okay, true. And then now you just have to run this command over here, right? So the results. Now you're going to run it directly. So you're going to do results. Um, search. Images Bing. Plug in the key. And then now you need to specify where you're going to put the files. So they're going to be um, F O for the type of bear, bear. Okay, you can play with that a little bit, to figure out what's the best approach. But you should end up with bears, black, you know. Whatever. And then once you have that in search, oh, that's the search, sorry, that's the search term actually. Uh, yeah, sorry, that's why I got confused. This is the search term, okay? So that, oops. Um, <clears throat> so this is the search term, F. Curly bracket, close curly bracket, O, bear, right? Or, or, or um, yeah, it plugs in the O there. Because the search actually could be more complex, right? You could say like Toyota Supra with custom wheel, right? You can expand all of these, you know, that search term to be more precise. So that I leave that to you to figure out. Um, and then once you do that, then you want to download the images. So then you're going to do download after you've done the search images and then you're gonna they're gonna go in destination destination it should be you know bears grizzly bears black bears teddy and so on and then also the final thing is you're just gonna tell it urls from results so the previous step here gets them right gets the url so it's going to get result and then you just get attribute got whatever you got and <coughs> you specify that what you want is the content url all right and that should do it for you that should give you the option or, or that should be the code that you need to, to do the analysis after to get your data. After this, you can pick it up pretty much where we left, where the, the other code that we did yes, uh, today in the other video uh, starts off, which I think it was FNS get image. files path 
right? So if you remember, if we go back to our previous Jupyter notebook, which you should be seeing here, you know, we kind of started there, fn get image files path, right? So that's, so you can see how that connects nicely. Oops. So you can see here, then this is where that would pick it up. But basically with this little code here and just getting your account, you should be able to get some images for your homework assignment. Does this make sense, guys? Are there any questions about this? All right, great. All right, so that's it. So that's the idea, right? So I, you know, you, you know, I want you to get as much data as you can, if possible, like a thousand, if you can uh, start soon, because let me know if there's a delay in getting your account. But this homework will be due because um, it's not really that difficult, right? It, it's more in, it's, if anything, it should just be interesting. You've got all the code. It's really about the data science, not the engineering of the code. <laughs> but just the data science itself. I want you guys to get some interesting data um, and then, you know, run it. So let's talk a little bit about that actually now. So this is the code. Let me just uh, actually, I'm going to save this so that I can post it as part of the homework. <clears throat> just going to call this, um, this is uh, Bing API. And now I'm going to save this one. I'm just going to save it as a Python script. And then I'm going to go to Brightspace. So data loader with your own data, right? So you should be seeing Brightspace now. And I'm just gonna load that file so that you guys know the homework. Yeah, so Bing API. Okay, so you, you've got the file now. Um, if we take a look at it, Yeah, it's there. Okay, good. So this homework assignment, so let me actually, before I forget, let's create the assignment then. I'm gonna do a new assignment. Okay. Homework. Use your, your data your image data, use your image data. to Build model. All right, so this is going to be Out of 100, this is going to be due today's the 31st, so it should be due on the 7th, right? By 10 p.m. But it'll stay open until the 9th. Does that work? So ask discussed in class, collect some image data using the Bing API, train and test <coughs> a CNN learner and report your results. Try to 
select interesting image data. Is this clear enough, guys? All right, great. So sounds like that's clear enough. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about some uh, what, like what you can do, but it's really up to you. You know, think of any, you can search anything, think of a problem, maybe something you've always thought about, you know, hmm, I've always wondered what would happen if this and that. Collect the data and then run it through the pipeline as we discussed here. So try to collect interesting image data. <clears throat> so this link, now created and the homework is assigned. It's good. All right, perfect. Um, and then I guess I should also add the link. <coughs> for the fast AI code. So data load your own data. So that's what we did today. So I'm just going to add a link. So that should be done. And then for the very basic stuff that we did last week, this one, since that's a broken link, let me just fix that. So that would have been mo more fast AI examples. Uh -huh. so, all right, there you go. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about, you know, the, because it, like I said, you have the code, you have the code to get things, right? You have the code to process. So it's not really so much about the code itself. It's about the problem that I want you to consider, right? So we go here, you know, as discussed in class, collect some image data using the Bing API, train and test a CNN learner and report your results. Try to collect interesting image data. All right, so <clears throat> collect as much data as you can, <clears throat> hopefully about a thousand samples. Um, let's see. Mm. Mm. Trying to, I'm trying to just make some ideas. Oh, here we go. So let's take a look at, so these are some previous projects that have been done using Bing API. And let me grab some. All right, so in the past, these are like fast AI reported some interesting projects and I want you guys to think about it, right? So instead of just doing something like a bear detector, uh, so let's do, let's see what projects they've done. So you could do like hummingbird, hummingbird varieties in Trinidad. You see, you see, you can, you can, that's the, that's the beauty of it, that you can actually, because it's Bing search engine, there might be a category, uh, hummingbird varieties in Trinidad, you know, some country, right? Maybe you guys, I don't know, uh, you're hunters and you like to hunt 
ducks of Indiana, right? And you, that's, you know, so that, that's what you look at or, you know, something interesting like that and, and just add some novelty to your search. Make the data science interesting. Uh, you could also do like bus types in Panama. So what are the bus types in Panama, right? So then you can build a classifier for that. So one student even created uh, an application that would help his fiance recognize his 16 cousins during a Christmas vacation, right? So it could be pictures of your family. Uh, so you just have to think about it. I want you guys to be creative about that. Does that make sense? So please don't just do it about cats and dogs or, or something like that. Find something that you're passionate about, that you're curious about. Do a search in the search engine for that. Get the images. You know, two to four classes is fine. And then as many samples as you can get. All right. So that's it for the homework assignment. Um, so that would be it for the homework assignment. So are there any questions before we move on to the other topic for today? Okay. All right, so it sounds like you guys are ready. So let's go ahead and move to, let's move to, ah, I have this on, on, uh, all right, so I'm moving now to, let's say, the NLP part of our class <clears throat> and the project that I, the mini project that I want you guys to take a look at. So as I said, I rearranged uh, the files, my, my file structure. And so now I have everything in the repository transfer learning for this course. So now we're gonna focus, if you notice this folder is new, Hug and Faces Transformers model is new. And so the idea with it is I, I, I put some files in, here, okay? So I've got some fine tuning files. I've got some data in it. I got some data sets and tokenizers, but you don't have to worry about that yet. Um, instead, the work that you're gonna do for this mini project is basically based around these files. So the files that we're gonna look at it, there's a lot of files in here, but basically, just a, a few ones. So Albert, Bart, the book example, Electra test, Roberta test. The other ones are just like utilities, like, you know, check my GPU, what are some metrics, check my environment, you know, and, and, and little things like that. So really the bulk of this is mini assignment is this, right? Albert, Bart, book example, Electra, and Roberta test. So those are already, pre-trained transformers. Remember that when we look, when we're looking at NLP in this um, section of the course, uh, our 530 course, we're looking at NLP, we're looking at transformers, which are pre-trained models that already have names. So remember that we talked about them as being classifier or being basically models that fill in the blank. Fill in the blank. So you so you can see, like if I click on Albert, right, and I make it a little bit bigger. Well, I'll talk about the pipeline in more detail today, but basically you give it, you know, uh, Michael is a mask person. Miguel is a mask person. El Chapo, right? El Chapo Guzman. So he is, um, you know, drug dealer, right? So El Chapo is mask person. So the, the point is, what is the classifier? What does it know about these people, right? The cat is so, and so it's gonna built in. So this will be your project. Uh, this, I'll just go over the examples. You guys have to really think about the scheme that you're gonna follow. But here's the, the basic idea. So in your book, there's a chapter called, in your Fast AI book, there's a chapter, chapter three, which is about ethics. 
So I'm not really going to go over all of that because it's something that you can just read. There's nothing for me to say about it, except the, ba the basic idea of, of data ethics. So today we have um, machine learning models, right? And the machine learning models learn to detect things. But some people have started to question um, how trustworthy are these models? Are these models biased? Do you see what I'm saying? Is there a bias between, and that's one of the things that uh, Rachel Thomas is arguing here. And so that's why she brings in this idea of ethics. So, you know, it, that she kind of insists that it's essential for a data scientist to be aware of this, that you can't just rely on the models right away and just because the models may have a bias. And so you kind of first have to assess that before you can actually um, uh, approach them. So one idea is this idea of like, you know, uh, let's say racial profiling, right? So if racial profiling does exist by people, could a machine actually learn to do that same thing, right? So that's kind of the issue that she is. And so as part of data ethics, um, we'll just briefly discuss it that, you know, the question, we're not going to get into the debate of whether it exists or not. Instead, we're going to do something about it, right? And so what I want you to do is to basically create an experiment where you would evaluate this in NLP only, not in images, only in NLP using these transformer models. So you can see I was already kind of hinting at that with this example. So this is a very crude but approach. But if you look, I'm, you know, for instance, is, is there a bias towards a Spanish name versus an English name, right? What would be the outcome and how would we measure something like that? You, you, do you guys see that? Does this make sense? Yeah, so I think it's an interesting project um, to kind of actually use, you know, we know that these pre-trained models are actually pretty well trained, right? They're, they're trained with a lot of data and we just want to see, we have to come up with some experiments and then we have to measure this to determine, because you're gonna, you're gonna tell me in your homework assignment of this mini project, whether you think there is bias or not. And so <clears throat> the question is, how do you support your conclusion? Do you guys see that? So that's, that's kind of where I'm going with this. So what I want us to talk about today, kind of have a little bit of a discussion is, how would we go, how would you guys go about this? Um, how would you go about this? this project. We saw last week when we ran this that it says like Michael is a good person. Michael is, you know, a trustworthy person. That that kind of thing, right? So how would we do this and in a way that it's fully automated and in a way that is statistically, you know, significant, if you will. What do you guys think? So this is a, you know, I wanted to have this discussion. So could we make a word set like stop words only like some negative adjectives and if they get assigned to a person with a an ethic ethnic name of whatever you know then versus some other one tends to be more positive adjectives then you could conclude that possibly there's a bias yep. somewhere in there i was exactly thinking the same thing I like your idea. So first of all, what you're saying is we have to use all of these classifiers, Roberta, Bert, Albert, all of them, right? And we have to give it enough test cases. So we have to give it enough sentences like, like these, right? And my sentences are very simple. I would like you guys to think of maybe more complex sentences than these, but yes, that's a good one. Pick a set of names, you know, just you can find names from other countries you know, other things, but obviously this would be dependent on the data that the models were trained on. These models were trained by Facebook and Google. So they probably had a lot of data in, in English. 
probably from the United States. So, so that's going to be applicable um, there, right? So if you pick something like from France, you know, just think about it. It may not be in this. In, so try to think of things within the, the context of the US, I would say Canada, probably. But yeah. You know. um, so the other thing is, so that's a good, you know, good start. I like your idea of the negative words. I thought about that. And I actually thought about something else, sentiment analysis. So in sentiment analysis, you take a sentence, you run a classifier, and the classifier will tell you if, the, if, if it's positive or negative. You guys see that? And maybe it assigns a score. So, in, so you, we could do something like that, where we generate all the sentences based on all these classifiers, and then apply to them sentiment analysis, and then we can use that to rank the sentences, to measure scores. But then we still need to say, for instance, out of all of these, by doing something like a t-test in statistics, um, we'll talk about that also in the next class. Because um, because you know you can't just say Bert is biased versus Roberta. You can't just say that. You know, even if you have experimental data, for you to actually make that statement you have to have like a statistical significance test. So something like the t-test, if that makes sense. You guys see where I'm going with this idea? Mm -hmm. Yes. However, um, don't just go by my idea, all right? I'm not very creative. <laughs> so you guys are actually, you know, you guys are young and you're more, much more creative. You have different perspectives, okay? So definitely give it some thought before you actually just decide, okay, I'm going to generate some sentences. I'm going to run them through the transformer. And then I'm just going to get sentiment analysis in there. I believe if I remember correctly, I already posted a sentiment analysis transformer in here. So you can actually use it as well. Okay, so I think a lot of the tools are there. I just have to give you the code for the t-test. Um, um, so we'll do that, like I said, in the next lecture. I'll go over a little bit of the theory, and then hopefully I'll, I'll find some code um, that we can use. But this should be a nice project. Um, think about things that I want you to consider, the richness of the sentences. You know, we want this to be significant, so possibly Consider not creating all the sentences from scratch, but actually finding a way that you can generate sentences automatically. You need to center the sentences around a person, for instance, right? So in that sense, uh, you need to find, you know, it's like named entity recognition is the formal term. You need to, you need to find sentences that have people in it, you know, find maybe, you know, how do you get text? from different, um, you know, different ethnicities or different uh, country of origin, different languages, but that it's all in English. So that's the data science part. And I'm leaving it for you guys to figure out. I've given you a lot of the tools. I just want you to run it, run the experiments, and then you need to tell me which ones are more biased than others, are they biased? Maybe you think they're not biased. So you're going to make an argument about it. And then also you're going to, but you're also going to give me the statistical significance of your assertions. Okay, so you'll have to think about that. Does this project make sense, guys? Are there any questions or thoughts? Any ideas? Something you want to you have a thought? I mean, we can discuss now because if we share ideas right now, uh, it might help to guide everyone. So any thoughts? Okay, so it doesn't sound that way. So keep in mind, as I said to you guys, um, machine learning is trained on data. And it's going to learn... <coughs> basically whatever that data tells it. So looking at the data appropriately, collecting the data appropriately is very important. And you can't just really like 
build tools, let's say for, you know, let's say law enforcement or whatever, just like that, without putting a little bit of thought into what you're doing, because these are very powerful things, uh, but uh, you have to kind of think about them. So definitely, um, I think this is a good way to address chapter three. So um, read through it uh, in the book. We will basically start on chapter four next week um, of the book, but we will discuss this project as it relates to NLP, okay? So if there's no discussion on the, on, the, on the mini project, we can just start looking at some code, but let me actually create um, on here, in the table of comments, I'm gonna put this under data ethics, data ethics. You know, if you guys become AI, practitioners, et cetera, you need to be aware of these things. So data ethics, and we're just gonna say, um, so I'm gonna create the assignment. How much time do you, do you guys think you need for something like this? We're gonna talk more about it next week, right? You guys wanna talk about it. Okay, That yeah, so. If you guys have questions now, that's great. Or are you just thinking um, you want to think about it a little bit more and then run ideas by me next time? Yeah, that'll probably be better. Okay, yeah, let's do that then. That works. So let's just say I'm going to give you two weeks for now. Let's, and then let's just call it, um, yeah, measure or a determine. Um, conduct a study to determine if transformers if transformers e.g you know, Bert, um, Bert, Roberta, et cetera, have bias? Sounds like an easy question. I want you to really consider, you know, all the aspects of something like this. So, because, you know, these kinds of questions can be pretty loaded. All right, so conduct a study to determine if transformers, e.g. Bert, Alberta, R R Roberta, et cetera, have bias. Um, provide quantitative response as discussed in class. Take some time to think about it. I will point out just the code that you have available today which is pretty, you know, pretty straightforward actually. And, um, and you saw my examples already. So as far as the due date, today's the 31st. So let's give it till the 14th for now. We might extend this. And it's 100. And so the 14, so it'll, oh, it'll open now until the 16th, it'll stay up, potentially. Sound good? So what I like about the format of this class, as you can see, is that, you know, my goal at least is not to get so like, caught up in, you know, the data, you know, in, in a lot of or the architectures, but instead to use the power of, of transfer learning to actually do some, some nice data science, right? To, to actually pose some questions and be able to come up with some interesting answers to them. All right. So anyway, so that's kind of the assignment. So if there are no questions, uh, we can move on to the rest of the code.
So sounds like it's all clear. All right, so for this one then, I'm gonna open up my terminal because I need to run this in my um, terminal. I'm gonna open up a new one. Okay, and that's gonna be, let me just SSH into the machine. Uh, Okay. All right, so I'm in, so let me share this screen. Okay, so I think you should be seeing my, <coughs> my screen. Okay, a little bit bigger there. So I'm gonna navigate to some of my scripts. I'm going to go to transformers. Okay. All right, so you should be seeing all the scripts. So we're going to run through some of these. Um, but I'm also going to use the what I have on, on uh, the GitHub just so that because that they're more organized there. But you can now download them and use for your own uh, assignment. Um, okay, so these are my scripts. Let me just start up the environment also. Um, I ended up creating a, an environment for fast AI and one for transformers just because I didn't want Everything's very finicky. And so I didn't want to mix PyTorch versions. My, my trans, so I'll, I'll tell you something, one recommendation. For whatever reason, Transformer, uh, sorry, TensorFlow is, is not playing nice with PyTorch. Um, and so what I would, rec you know, and one of the things that I, and if you guys solve this, actually let me know. But one of the key things with having TensorFlow and PyTorch in the same environment, Anaconda environment, is the NVIDIA drivers. So I'm concerned that if I install the drivers for TensorFlow, it's going to mess up my PyTorch or, if I, you know, or vice versa. So I have ended up uh, just using, relying on the, because this is a Py, more PyTorch focused class. So I've just used the NVIDIA drivers for PyTorch. And then my, my transformers environment is just built on top of uh, PyTorch. I, I've not really provided any code that uses TensorFlow. I don't, although I want you to know that TensorFlow, you know, in theory should work. The issue is, as I said, to me at least, has been that the driver. Everything else, I think, you know, with an, an Anaconda environment can take care of, but the driver itself is kind of of the machine. And I already have like driver issues with this GPU box. So um, I've been a little bit careful with that. I leave it to you guys to kind of figure out how you're going to do it. But my recommendation would just be just stick with PyTorch. Does that make sense? Yep. yep. Very good. So now I'm going to activate PyTransformer. <laughs> I transformer. Perfect. Okay, so I'm now in my environment and I'm in my files, right? So before we start running them, let's just kind of look at them a little bit. So we're gonna go back to the GitHub over here. And as I said, um, I should probably, for this assignment, I'm gonna provide a link 
the transformers um, module. So transfer, transformers. So your code file should be here. All of these already run. I've tested them, so they should run nicely. And really, you just need what's in intro. Maybe the sentiment classifier, which might be outside, uh, but we'll we'll arrive at something more concrete next week when we discuss this. So now, let me just add here the code under data ethics code. All right. So the code is there. You can see it. All right, great. And um, it's part of the assignment also. All right. So let's take a look at the code that, that's available here. So like I was saying, the you know, basically, if we look at hug and face transformers, I actually broke up this folder into four subfolders, which are really the main things that you need. Um, you have, I have intros, I have some data, I have fine tuning and data sets and tokenizers. Basically with intro, you really don't have to do um, much. These are the models that are kind of ready to go. You know, they just work. Whenever you want to do fine tuning, you have to start adding tokenizers because the idea is that the data, you know, whenever you take words in a vocabulary that's really large, let's say, you know, 300,000 words, those words are not going to be represented as text. They're going to be represented as IDs, you know, so the word the is probably like ID number 13, whereas the word, uh, let's say, um, quantitative is probably going to be like ID number uh, 5049 because that ID is less frequent than the word the. And the ID, the tokenizers are based on frequency of the words in the vocabulary. Um, so that's one important issue there. Uh, so tokenizers, if you have new data, you have to take your own words from your own data and replace them with the ID of the train data. So you will always see when we're working with these transformers that um, you have to bring in the tokenizer model and then you have to bring the actual transformer model and kind of use them in tandem. But the good thing about it is a lot of these tokenizers are already <coughs> trained for you, pre-trained. But you have, so I have this uh, link here on data sets and tokenizers, I kind of put it together. I'm not gonna, I don't wanna get into, the, into this one right away. All right, and instead we're just gonna get into the other ones. Fine tuning is really a nice, the nice topic where you might now imagine we bring in a model, but now we're also gonna bring in your, our own data, right? And we're gonna fine tune it with our own data. But we're not gonna do that yet. And instead, we're just gonna look at and some data just includes, as you can see, some files, Austin, um, Emma from Jane Austen, I think that is, right? And some, you know, Iris is there and some corpus. This just shows you like the format of some of these files and how they're stored, uh, which of course is important. But really our main focus will just be an intro where we can, we can look at the plain vanilla uh, transformer models. We don't have to do any fine tuning we can just use them as is. So this is where, where I want you to start, especially with this data ethics project or mini project, is I really just want you to use the pre-trained models. So let's just kind of go in order and you know, let's look at the Albert um, environment, right? So if you look here at, <coughs> in Albert, because we're providing our own sentences, right? You know. You guys can think up of any sentence. Maybe you're going to say, you know, um, Calumet, the Calumet River. Well, you know, the Calumet, the Calumet River is very cold right now. And you want to do some analysis with that. 
Well, as it turns out, the Calumet R River was not maybe in the original uh, data set. So what are you going to do then, right? So anyway, that, that the, all those words need to be converted into tokens via the tokenizer. So let's think a little bit about how this would work, right? So let's take uh, the Albert model and let's think about the logic of it. So the way that it works is that, you know, we use the transformers uh, module from Hug and Face, uh, you know, which is in full development right now. And so I, I imagine this is very, uh, it's gonna change quite a bit. But from it, we import the Albert tokenizer and the Albert model. And that's really what I was saying, if you remember, is that we always bring in these two things and they're, they always correspond with each other. Like if I set the Roberta model, then the Roberta tokenizer. If I say the Stilbert model, the Stilbert tokenizer, right? And it's kind of that duality um, of it. So you're gonna need, um, now notice here, I do pip install sentence piece, sentence piece. Those are additional, those are not tokenization, but they're ways of processing the data as well. All right, so they're just a, a little bit uh, different ways of making the data meaningful, right? Other than just taking a sentence, sentence and splitting on white space, right? Well, you know, that misses a lot. So if you have the word, where is the car? And then you have car and, X and question mark as a one thing, you know, you wanna tokenize that, but then I was sleeping, maybe you want sleep and ing to become two things. So those are uh, additional uh, pre-processing that can be done. But in this case, let's just think, of the basic pipeline of the transformer. That's really all I want you to, for, for right now, to become comfortable with. So as I said, we, we, we do the Albert tokenizer and the Albert model. And guys, let me just grab some coffee because my throat gets really, really bad. <laughs> So um, we've got those. So if you notice in the next two sentences, we have the tokenizer and the model. So we do Albert tokenizer dot from pre-train and we pick the model Albert base version two. These are just in the hug and face hub, right? So basically this is hug and face as a hub, you download it onto your computer and then you can use it. You only download it once, you know, but that's basically how it works. That's the tokenizer. So you can convert the words. Then you have Albert model from pre-trained Albert base model. So now you have your tokenizer and your model. Hopefully you guys can see. And then now I just, you know, I took a sentence. The cat is so sad. Um, so I take the tokenizer. I run the text on it. I tell it to return tensors of type <laughs> PyTorch, okay? So you can also say return tensors of type TF, TensorFlow. But as I said to you guys, um, I'm only, I'm trying to keep this as, you know, just PyTorch centric. And just because I had to choose one uh, card, um, at least, you know, I, I had, I, I initially tried really hard actually to have both and wasn't successful. So if you guys solve that problem, please let me know. Um, so then we have the text, we run it, it returns a tensor coded, encoded input. Um, and now you can see here encoded input gets added into the model and it gives you an output, right? So that's, you know, um, that's basically what can happen. So for instance, let's take here now the, the, there are various tasks that these models can do. They, they have multitask things, approaches. And so that's why you can use something in transformers called the pipeline. And the pipeline is a very convenient way of kind of grabbing a model, 
and telling it what task you want to do and then do it. So for instance, you can see here, we call the transformers pipeline and we're going to use the model Albert base version two. And then we tell it fill in the math, right? So now uh, it's going to give us this object fill mask, which allows us to run several inputs on it. Pipeline, what's nice about pipeline is it takes care of a lot of this for you, right? So notice here we were doing it manually. This is like the most, you know, streamlined, but this is where I want you guys to start with. I, you know, really this, you know, these, this assignment is most mostly about the motivation, seeing the power of these pre-trained models. Later on, of course, you'll probably want to fine tune them. So you, you'll need to have more access to the code. But that's the basic idea. So here I have the cat is so mask. So it's going to predict something. Then I wrote, you know, I was looking for some bad guy, right? And so I, I picked this one. And, you know, what, what is it going to say about somebody that's like a bad guy versus, you know, two good guys, right? So what, how does it work? And so this is where I want you guys to be creative and think about this issue, right? So how, how do you address it? So you can see here, Miguel is a person. Michael is a person. So the, the model should give us some input. All right, so let's go ahead. That is, uh, that script is Albert test. So let's go ahead on the machine. Okay, so I'm gonna switch over. I'm gonna share, so I should be sharing now my screen. So I'm gonna run, I'm already in the environment, so I'm gonna run Albert test.ui. So it's thinking. All right, and there's the output as you can see. And let's see what it says. So it provides a score of like the highest, provides the token ID, provides the token string that it predicted, and it completes it in the sentence. And notice it's only by default doing like four of these sentences. So for El Chapo uh, is saying is a figurative person, is a Franciscan, Dominican, Moroccan, Basque, right? So it's picking up on the Spanishness of this. Um, the cat is so cute, the cat is adorable, the cat is so happy, the cat is so funny. For Miguel, it's saying Miguel is a good person. Miguel is a wonderful person. Miguel is a nice person, funny person, great person. For Michael, Michael is a wonderful person. Michael is a good person. Michael is a funny person. Michael is a great person. Michael is a nice person. So as you can see, uh, these are the outputs that we're getting. But because we're talking about an automated system, if there's bias, we're going to find it. And so we just have to search more deeply. So I would say we did not find bias right now. So we need to think a little bit more deeply about this problem. Any comments or questions or thoughts? <clears throat> Nothing? Um. Yes, please. My only question is, so they must not have had any information from like uh, news reports or something in their database? Why? Or they could maybe connect the dots with El Chapo and some. Yeah, so that, yeah, exactly. So that's why though, this is only Albert, right? So what are things that you need to research? You need to find out Albert. You need to find out what data, you, you brought up a, a really nice question. You need to find out how many data sets, what data Albert was trained on. So if you look for instance, GPT-3, right? Which we, I don't have a GPT ver working version yet. So I'm working on that. Uh, once I have one, I'll, I'll definitely post it. But if you look at um, GPT-3, let me just go to G. Three, and I don't I think it's in Wikipedia. 
Ah, there it is. It's got exactly what I was looking for. <clears throat> if you look GPT-3, training and capabilities, you can see what it was trained on. It was trained on the common crawl, web text, books one, books two, and Wikipedia. So you're right, right? So like Wikipedia is not news per se. Um, books are probably not news. So, and look at how many tokens it has. And um, so definitely finding out what data they were trained on is a pretty good idea for all of them. Do you guys see that? Yeah. Any other uh, thoughts or questions? That was a good, good comment. Can you give another example of like a sentence you think would be impactful? Because I'm yeah, like that's trying to think of things I would write down and I'm having trouble. Yeah, that's a good one actually. What I what I was thinking honestly, um, what I was thinking is it's something along the lines of what Jason said. What if we found news articles? Maybe specific news articles, like crime-related news articles. And then from that, pick our sentences and then run those. I don't, I don't mean fine-tune the model. I just mean, because you're right, the richness of our sentences is not great, right? You know, Michael is, uh, you know, that's probably not gonna cut it, but if we could find longer sentences, more complex sentences of news, and then randomly mask them, so what I mean by randomly mask them is, as, as, you, as you saw, right? So um, go back over here. Randomly ma masking them just means, where do we put the mask? <clears throat> we keep track of that, and then we start to figure out what it's predicting. Um, maybe that, because I don't know, Kyle. I actually don't know what would be the correct sentence that would be impactful, as you said. So the best thing that I can think of is to select these sentences randomly from interesting uh, you know, news articles or, or things like that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, can we mask the name? Is that something you would think would be a good idea or potentially? So, so that it predicts a name for it? Yeah. So if we have a sentence, um, trying to think of something I, you know the only i don't know what it's gonna do so the only thing my I, the only thing i wish i had is i wish i had a gpt2 and gpt3 working like i said i'm gonna work on that this week if i get it done i'll post it because right now i only have those but you know that it's very important to understand which model we're using what data i'd use and then yeah but i think yeah try it definitely okay. try it Anything else, guys? Nothing else. All right. So let's uh, let's take a look at another one. Um, as you can see, they're pretty straightforward. There's actually nothing too complex with these, so I don't I don't necessarily need to type them up. Um, let we looked at Albert, right? So let's take a look at Bart. So here we have BART was summarization, but think about it, you know, is the summariz summarization biased? Do you see that? So, and again, the sentiment analysis classifier, that's something that we'll talk a little bit more about in the next lecture. I think it's a good way because if you generate something, then you can run sentiment analysis on that, um, on that sentence, and then it can tell you if it's positive or negative. So, you know, if you do a thousand of those, you have a count of how many, which one had more positives versus more negatives. So there, you know, give if you have a good uh, sentiment classifier, which, you know, we do have one here that's okay, one of the best. So then, you know, we should be able to, well, at least get something out of it, right? But this is another example. So this is the, uh, as I said, the uh, BART. So here we can look at the pipeline again from transformers. 
import auto model, auto model, auto model is like a general way of getting a model. Pipeline, this is what makes it easy to pick a task. BART tokenizer, you know, we're using BART, right? So we need the BART tokenizer. Uh, BART for conditional generation, so generating uh, text and BART config. So this is something else that allows us to set up the parameters of the transformer because the transformer has a lot of parameters. It's definitely one of the most complicated deep learning algorithms out there. So notice here, again, same thing, we call pipeline, but this time we specify that we want a summarization task. So it's a summarizer, okay? If we want our model and to to tokenizer, we can use BART for conditional generation because this is the task generating te you know, text from pre-trained Schlafer distilled BART CNN. This is from Hug and Face's uh, models that we saw last week. BART tokenizer from pre-trained distilled BART, right? And so we got our model and tokenizer right there. And then we just build our pipeline where we want it to be summarization given the model and the token. And now we call it NLP. And then now you can give it some text, run it, and it's gonna generate print Q. We had run this one again uh, last week. Let me just quickly run it to kind of for completion, uh, but that's BART test. I'm gonna go back over here. BART test. All right, so there it goes. And I think we, we will finish it at 520, correct, guys? Yeah. Yeah, so we'll finish in eight minutes. I should be able to run the other two. But as you can see, it does the summarization. So again, is the summarization by it? You know, you'll have to think about these things, right? Uh, it may not be something that you use, but it's certainly something to consider. The next one, uh, we're going to go back to our. Oh, oh, wait, sorry, I didn't show the, the screen. All right, so this is I ran BART test, and you can see the output. All right, let's go back to the GitHub. And let's look at intro. So after BART, there's book example one. This is, I, I don't know why, I, it's Bert. Didn't really name it, but you can see here, similar idea. From transformers, import Bert tokenizer. Uh, we got pandas there too. So Bert tokenizer, pre-trained, Bert case, on case. On case just means that everything was lowercase. Base usually just means that it's like the initial one before improvements. The text using transformer transformers is easy. You can print out uh, the, what the text looks like with the tokenizer. We'll see that in a second. It should look like numbers. And then the tokenizer will take text and it'll return a PyTorch tensor as your encoded input. So you can um, take a look at that. Print the encoded input, then we go ahead and build our model. So I'm gonna say from transformers input auto model, I'm gonna auto model dot from pre-train BERT, BERT base on case. So I'm gonna bring in the BERT model. Then I'm gonna run model on the encoded input and I've got my output. If I wanna do a task, I can call the pipeline. So I can do from transformers import pipeline, pipeline fill mask model BERT base on case on masker and then the man work as a mask, right? So then we're gonna print this out and see what we get. So let's go ahead. This one is book example one, but it's really Bert. So I need to share that one. All right, so you should be seeing now that. So I'm gonna do book one. Python book, book one example, run it. Okay, see the IDs were printed out there. Uh, 
anyway. Um, and then you can see there's the score. Some tokens, the man worked as camp carpenter. So this is just a dictionary. And then it prints it out in pandas. It, it looks a little bit nicer. So let's see, it says the man worked as a carpenter, the man worked as a waiter, the man worked as a barber, the man worked as a mechanic, the man worked as a salesman. So here's another idea. What about the professions that it assigns to a person by name? So, you know, Joe works as a, you know, could that be the trick that shows you bias or not? Do you guys see that? So you have to be creative. And I think this kind of ties back to Kyle's question. We have to be clever about how we ask the question. Do you guys see that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Gender bias for professions. Exactly. What if it says, you know, the, the lady works as a gender bias. Exactly. Very good one. Yes. Agreed. So that, also, one quick, go ahead. one quick question. So if it only chooses to pick good things to say with a name, is that a bias as well? Like that never mentions a negative? That's true. I mean, that might be, right? So if you, if you ran sentiment analysis on all of those sentences, it might turn out that those come out more positive than other ones. So then, yeah, that is. Now the question is, is that statistically significant? That's the only other, and for that, we need to have a lecture on Monday, next week. Did I answer your question, Jason? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, because we can't just say things like that we got to frame it on some, some, some framework. So I'll, I'll work on that too for next week. But anyway, yeah, that's a good one. So here we've seen another example. This one was, we got a few minutes left. So let's finish up. Um, go back to the GitHub. So we did this one. Book example one is based on Bert. So now let's go. I think I only have four. So the other, oh no, I have two more. Electra and Roberta. So let's try Electra. So Electra from Transformers import Electra tokenizer uh, from pre-train Google. So this is a Google Electra small generator. Keep in mind, some are sometimes like the still bird is actually not the, the main version of bird. It's a distilled smaller. So take that into consideration as well. But we re read in the tokenizer. Again, pipeline, pipeline fill mask, Google Electra tokenizer. The cat is very masked. And then this one we were playing with the other day, the goat on the mountain will mask, right? And so we looked at that one. So this is uh, Electra. Okay, and let me share the screen. And you can see we had done this one. The goat on the mount, mountain will die, right? So it assigns some kind of a negative thing to goats, <laughs> right? Wouldn't you agree? So, so that's something to think about as well. And then the last one, let's take a look at the last one that we have there, which I think is Roberta. And then we'll wrap up with that for today. So Roberta. But I think you probably get the idea now from Transformers import Roberta tokenizer, Roberta model. This is Roberta base for the tokenizer and the model. The cat is so sad. So we tokenize the text as a PyTorch tensor. Then we run it through the model. We can also use the pipeline, pipeline, fill mask, Roberta base, tokenizer. The cat is so, and you, you see the basically the point. And so now we just need to run Roberta. So share the screen. Python Roberta. And you should be seeing me running Roberta. There it is.
and it works as well. The cat is so cute, so sweet, beautiful, handsome, so funny. All right, so again, this is the assignment. So you have these four. If I, if I come up with a few additional ones, I'll, I'll just plug them in and I'll discuss them on Monday, but you have, you can work in this because really, it's really about like, how do you do the experiment as opposed to, you know, which one you're using. So it's 520, we can stop here for today. Are there any questions before um, we end the discussion? All right, great. So you guys have uh, plenty, plenty to do. Uh, kind of inter an interesting mini project and you also have a homework assignment with fast AI and your own image set. Again, make them interesting, right? You know, less, on, less heavy on the coding, but that means make it like, you know, find interesting questions and see how it does. All right, so I'll stay for a couple of minutes. If you have any questions, I'll stop the recording now.